You think, John, that, that when the Prime Minister addresses the nation at 5.40, he will refer to George Galloway personally? Do you think he'll refer to Rochdale? Or do you think he'll try and make it something that is statesmanly and doesn't address individual constituencies well, or people? He did say something earlier this week about um, how uh, politicians have a responsibility to take the heat out of, out of uh, some of these debates. And I would have thought a personal attack on, on George Galloway would be uh, adding heat rather than subtracting it. So I think, I think he will keep it general. I yep. think, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I mean, I think it's terribly important for him that he doesn't give the impression that he's lost control of the situation. That, uh, or is that, panicking that, or having a knee-jerk reaction to one, one election absolutely. victory a of, by -election. of, of a by-election. Exactly. And, it's and, also... and a very special by-election. I mean, you know, this is... OK, this, let, yeah. we're going to come to that now. As we've been discussing, George Galloway claimed victory in the Rochdale by-election last night. Let's hear what he had to say. Labour is on notice that they have lost the confidence of millions of their voters who loyally and traditionally voted for them generation after generation. Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak are two cheeks of the same backside, and they both got well and truly spanked tonight here in Rochdale. I just, I find that such a vulgar and such an I, un, unamusing an and dreary... Well, he said it over and over again. I interviewed George Galloway about 10 years ago yeah. and he told me that David Cameron and Ed Miliband were two cheeks of the same backside. I mean, he just uses the same phrase all the time. Absolutely dire, isn't it? Let me ask Scarlett about this, though. When we hear, you know, for Rochdale, for Palestine, this is for Gaza, this is for Gaza, that obviously played successfully for George Galloway in Rochdale. What about the rest of the country? Could you, could you um, attempt election at the general election using this as your mandate, using this as the kind of you know, central tenet of your, of your campaigning philosophy? So I think anyone wishing to learn lessons from this by-election in terms of general election uh, strategy would be sort of barking up the wrong tree. Mm. Uh, it was extraordinary in lots of ways. Rochdale, anyway, is a very unusual seat. It was a Labour Lib Dem marginal for many years, had Cyril Smith as its main MP, uh, and it's sort of been quite all over the place. National Front did very well there in 2010. UKIP came second in 2015. Very unusual seat, very unusual by-election in what happened with not just the Labour candidate, but um, the Lib Dem candidate, and indeed the Reform candidate being a sort of disgraced former Labour MP anyway. All of this made it um, a sort of very, very messy by-election, as well as obviously some of the demographics and the concerns about the Middle East conflict as well. Uh, and the fact that there's only sort of one George Galloway and he's not going to be able to run in every seat in the country. Mm -hmm. I do also think that uh, by-elections generally lend themselves to um, specific issues that are outside people's general priorities more. I think at the na national election, I think it's going to be a referendum on the sort of state of the country. Uh, most people you talk to want to see the government gone and they're going to be voting, thinking about the economy, the state of the NHS and immigration. Can I just ask, uh, John, when, when Scarlett says there's only one George Galloway, what well, is it about George Galloway that makes him this, this maverick, character, this mercurial character, this person who keeps on coming back, well, who doesn't go away. Well, what's he got? What is well, it? He's absolutely ruthless about exploiting um, the politics of the, of the Muslim community in, in places like Rochdale and Bethnal Green and Bradford. Uh, but he also allies to that a sort of a, a working class politics aimed at disillusioned working class Labour voters. Uh, I mean, we saw that in, in the Rochdale campaign. He, he, had, he had different leaflets for, for Muslim households and for, for, for white households. He, he had a message about make Rochdale great again. I mean, it was just an echo of Trump. I mean, it was Gosh. just straightforward Trumpism. And, and let me ask Peter, is that, is that a kind of kosher way of going about a campaign? That you, you know, you target different facets of different communities with different leaflets and a different policy, which, which is bespoke Per, per community, you know, just say, well, this is what I believe and I believe this, I'm doing it for everybody because we're all the same community, we're doing it for, together for each other because we're all people. You don't do that, you say, now for you, I'll do this, I'm, for you, this is my priority, I'm going to focus on that. Well, targeting uh, different uh, parts of even an individual constituency and highly targeted ads, especially online, is a tool of campaigning that has been used more and more. Uh, and, and also elections are about winning. You've got to do that. You've got to do whatever it takes, really, within the law to win an election. So I, I can totally see... I mean, ruthless is the word, certainly, when it comes to George Galloway. He's an incredible campaigner. He's a very charismatic person. He's a person who really, uh, you know, I remember one of the most powerful 
uh, debates I've ever seen was between him and Christopher Hitchens on the Iraq War, yes. which is just not. Just really... remind people what, what he was saying yesterday. So he was he very said, ag against the Iraq War and, of course, had and going to war in Iraq, which was a big debate, of course, in our country about 20 years ago. And, uh, of course, uh, Christopher Hitchens, uh, now no longer with us, but had the opposite view. Mm -hmm. it, it's really worth actually going back and looking at it on YouTube or something like that to see how forceful. Uh, George Galloway can be, how good an orator he is. You may completely disagree with him, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, he is a very persuasive and charismatic person. And that is really what the voters of Rochdale have responded to. Uh, there are, it is a heavily Muslim constituency. There are 30% of, of people who, uh, who are of that constituency who are Muslim, against about 38% who are would identify themselves as Christian. Now, it's not... Uh, it's obviously not a given, and clearly not, because we've seen in Rochdale that all uh, Muslims vote Labour, for example. That's a, that's a very, very general, generalised and untrue thing to say. But what is true is that many Muslim people care about the Middle East, care about Gaza, and care about the Palestinian cause. And that, of course, is something that George Galloway consistently, not just in this election campaign, has been very, very vocal about. John? Well, and that's, that, that's what he did in Bethnal Green. Yep. He, he used his opposition to the Iraq war um, to, to 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 get the same messages to the to the Muslim uh, Muslim population in in Bethnal Green and uh, succeeded in in getting getting himself elected, but only for one term. I mean, the thing about George Galloway is he you know he he, he gets in, but he fizz, he fizzles out quite quickly. In the three by elections that he has won, he's he's lost at the next general election. Yeah. And, and Scarlett, do you think what your polls are showing that Keir Starmer must be very afraid? Of, of George Galloway and the way George Galloway said the tectonic plates are shifting and all of that. Is, is that rhetoric? Is that true? Or, or is he just effectively quite a flashy flash in the pan, expunged pretty sharpish? I think both things can be true at once. I think it'll be a massive headache for Keir Starmer inside the House of Commons and especially given the tension sort of internally within the Labour Party. I think uh, in terms of general election, in terms of other constituencies, Keir Starmer's not got very much to worry about. So uh, there's only just under 40 constituencies with similar demographic makeup to Rochdale, where sort of more than one in five people um, identify as Muslim. Most of those are already very strong Labour strongholds, uh, and the main challenges tend to be Conservatives, who we expect their vote's going to go significantly down in 2019 anyway. So the threat isn't uh, particularly real, I think, at the ballot box, but it's going to be um, it's going to be messy. I think it's been a headache for both parties this year. We've seen that with the Conservatives as well in the last couple of weeks, and I think that will get worse.